Here in Australia, we don't have that much of an option to connect to the internet besides the NBN, the National Broadband Scam. What we have on our house is a fixed wireless point and that goes into an antenna in town. So we're on fixed wireless NBN here. And when we first had it installed, it was actually quite good. But the more people that went onto it, the government hasn't upgraded the infrastructure behind that. And then as a result, it's really quite slow. They've introduced a new bill in Australia where they guarantee by law a minimum of 25 megabits per second. And I don't think anyone in regional Australia who has NBN can put their hand on their heart and say that they get that consistently. We just don't. We ended up going with Starlink, and in this video I'll show you all about Starlink, their setup, the speeds that we're getting, and the costs that are associated with it. Firstly, the cost of Starlink. On a regular day, Starlink's going to cost you about $925 for the hardware, that is the satellite, the modem, and the cabling that you get. You might pay postage and handling on top of that. We didn't pay that. Just before Christmas, they were running a, uh, a promo for $495 for the hardware, including postage, and we ended up doing that. What they're doing right now, though, I've seen, is that they're doing, for at the time of recording this video, $495 for the hardware, including postage, plus two months free internet connection. And that two months free, your ongoing cost, is $139. And that is probably the most expensive uh, residential internet that exists here in Australia but it's probably the fastest as well. Probably can save some money by getting it second hand. You see them listed often enough, the hardware, the satellite dishes on Gumtree and on Facebook Marketplace. You can get them second hand and you can save a fair bit of money, but they're going to generally be older generations of the satellite dishes. They don't perform nearly as well as the new ones. But if you do end up getting a second hand one, make sure the person that you're buying it from transfers ownership of that device to you. So your payment methods are updated, and Starlink knows that it's you at this address, so it can set it up for you there. Other than that, the rest of this process should be the same for you. I was concerned about the amount of trees that we have around our house. We love our trees. Um, the way this technology works is that you need a good line of sight between where these satellites pass in the night sky or in the sky and the dish that you have wherever you situated it in your location here. For us, it's up on the roof there and those trees that are here, they're south. And in the southern hemisphere, that's the direction you've got to point your dish. In the northern hemisphere, you point to the north. Those trees, they kind of come into line and it may affect your speed. But we'll talk about speed in just a sec. I tried all around the di different places on the farm to put this dish. I even tried out there on the dairy where there's no trees whatsoever and it still gave me some obstruction um, alerts with the app when I was looking for a clear sky. So I said, well, if it's giving me an obstruction alert out there, we'll sod it. I'm going to try it down here. And it worked. The speeds we get are incredible. Installation of this setup, I didn't expect it to be difficult and it wasn't. When I first got it, I opened the box up and I thought, there are no instructions here at all. I've never done satellite internet before. I kind of wanted some instructions. Um, and you just didn't need them. There was a big sheet of cardboard that was in this thing. I thought it was packaging until I turned it over and there's three pictures on there. Basically says, find a spot, plug it in and get the app. And the app walks you through the lot. Dead, set, simple. There are different options that you can have to mount this thing. To mount the dish, you've got like uh, pole mounts and all sorts of stuff you buy directly from Starlink. I've just used the one that came with it and it works perfectly fine. I've got it on the roof. It's fairly good weight to it. It's not going to blow off and I've secured it there pretty well. It comes with a cable that goes from the dish to your modem. It's about 75 feet. It's really long. So you've got to work out a way in your situation to bring that from the roof or bring it to wherever you've got it installed into your house, which is where you're going to have your modem. There are no ethernet cables that come with that modem. It's all 100% wireless. So you've got to go and set up all your devices around your house to connect to that wireless access point now. Wherever you are, if you're thinking, maybe I can't install this here, I've got too many obstructions, just download the app from the App Store or the Google Play Store, depending on the phone that you have, and run that location setup. And you don't need a Starlink system to run that. You'll be able to test it before you even buy one. So do that, run it, and you'll see if you're going to get too many obstructions there before you go ahead and buy it. Keeping in mind the Starlink system the hardware has a 30-day money-back guarantee so you can get it anyway install it doesn't work send that back now i know you want to know about the speed the speed of this is incredibly fast so for the nbn the wireless point-to-point -point wireless that we have the fixed wireless we were getting uh, about 12 it ranged between 12 and 20 megabits per second and that's that's okay it's pretty bad for a first world country with the only internet option that you have for this 
Um, I've had this now for about 10 days or so and I've been doing speed tests all through the day. I was mainly concerned about those trees that are outside. I get onto the speedtest.net and do the testing through there. I do it multiple times a day, uh, multiple times a night and it's pretty consistent sitting around about 120 to 140 megabits per second pretty much all the time. It does go lower and it does go higher. And I've only had it as low as 80 megabits per second, which is still incredibly fast. And I've had it as high as 240 megabits per second, which is just insane. What does that mean though? If you're in a house of say, a family of four or family of five, that sort of thing, and they're all streaming different things. Say you're streaming at 4K, a 4K video when you're streaming that requires about 15 megabits per second. So it takes up a bit of that bandwidth on the NBN. With this, you could have 10, 15 people in your house streaming at 4K and it'll do it all fine for all of those users in that house. If you're downloading something for the software that I use for YouTube, uh, Final Cut Pro, if I bring in plugins and so forth to that, um, things that used to take half an hour to an hour to download, they're coming down in like seconds to just a couple of minutes, incredibly fast. Updates on the Mac, updates on your phone, incredibly fast download speed. So all those things speed up uh, your day to day if you like and I've not yet had it once drop out at all ever doesn't matter what time of night it's always up it's always running the speed is actually just awesome it's incredibly expensive for internet but it's incredibly fast it seems to be quite reliable too anyway guys that's it for today catch you later